Good morning, y'all. That was weak. We drinking decaf this morning? How many of you heard of Buck Owens? Anybody ever heard of him? He ain't here. That's right. He did a song that had in the uh, in the lyrics, "They're gonna put me in the movies. They're gonna make a big star out of me." Somebody finish it. Good gravy. What was the name of it? We're going to start playing Jeopardy around here a little more regularly. It's called All You Gotta Do Is Act Naturally. Yeah. I think that needs to be JC3's new slogan. All you gotta do is act naturally. All right, we're going to sing since y'all ain't very good at trivia. this again. Good morning, y'all. Y'all woke now. That's a good thing. Pastor Chet's going to have a double fist full of announcements for you here in just a minute. Do we have any first-time visitors here today? We got one that admitted to it right there in the middle. A couple over here. Anybody else? We don't want to miss anybody. If y'all will real quickly look through that bag that they give you, there's a song book in there. Pick you out a song that you'd like to do. We're going to do one more, and then it'll be your turn. I'll call you guys up one at a time. <laughs> you still got the bag with the $50 bill? We got any more first-time visitors? <laughs> right over here on the side, right up here at the front. Hands coming up everywhere. Somebody caught the Holy Ghost right here at the Cowboy Church. <laughs> yeah, buddy, that's a good thing. We are glad that you chose JC3 as your place to worship this morning. Welcome them, y'all. We do things just a little bit differently. We don't have the traditional organ and, and turn to page 132 in the blue book. We don't do that kind of stuff. We, uh, we like to have fun up here. We like to worship our God in whatever manner you choose. Uh, you're not limited here. 
So if the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, show us something, we'll probably join in with you. Yeah, we, uh, we don't pass the hat here. We believe that uh, giving is between you and the Holy Spirit. You can do that in either of the wooden churches in the back or the one in the foyer. Uh, if you'll look in the chair in front of you, there's a yellow piece of paper. That's called a communication card. If you have a need for the church, prayer need, if you'd like to be water baptized, anything along that lines, if you'll turn that into one of the churches there, uh, somebody will get with you if, if that need is there. So come on up, Pastor, and tell them what's on your mind. All right. We're going to run down some announcements here right quick. First off, I want to thank everybody for your prayers. The other day, Thursday night, I got some antibacterial soap completely filled my eye up. It's a long story how that happened. It wouldn't happen in another 200 years. But that particular antibacterial soap had a ingredient in it that they make methylate out of. How many of you old folks remember some methylate? And did y'all know methylate could be accredited for some people realizing they were professional athletes? Because <laughs> my mom, I used to have bad tonsils, and she'd say, come here, boy, I'm going to mop your tonsils. Anybody ever heard of that? Had a big old Q-tip, a souped-up Q-tip that long, and they'd, she'd mop my tonsils with methylate and turn me loose, and I'd jump off the porch Never even touch the steps and run around out there. It would burn. But anyway, that got in my eye. And about two hours of washing it out with water, I told Allison, I, I can't stand this no more on what we're going to do. And I said, the problem is I can't get in that car because if I don't have water in my, uh, in my eye, I'll tear that car to pieces. It was excruciating pain. But by the grace of God, I got me a big old pot. Miss Allison brought out her big uh, soup pot. I filled it with water, put it in my lap, and splashed water in my eyes. Some of you welders probably know all about that stuff, but golly. I, but I am very thankful. Uh, they went to the emergency room. They said, you got, you know, severe abrasions on your cornea, and you got burning, and your eyes have been burned by that chemical they call poison control. And it was a, it was a Western time. But uh, <laughs> then they said, oh, yeah, this, this was Thursday night. They said, you need to see a, a fancy word for the eye doctor. What is it? <laughs> and it might have had another one on top of that. It was a fancy one. You know, you got to go see this person tomorrow or the next day. So I said, you just told me I got to do it Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. They said, yeah, good luck with that. But we call Layman Eye Center in uh, Nacogdoches. And believe it or not, they saw me that morning on Christmas Eve. So and gave me some stuff. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm thankful for them. But anyway, hey, we, we, we got it done. I put that, I thought, well, that's just some soap. I'll get that out. I was at the dog kennel, and it's probably 50 yards to the house, and I think I was somewhere around 5.2 seconds in that 50-yard dash with my boots on, all right? But anyway, thank you for your prayers. I'm good. Good day today. We're going to have water baptisms here in a minute at the end of... At the end of our announcement, so if you're going to get baptized, you can go ahead and kind of get ready, kind of make your way over to this side of the stage, and we'll run through. He's here. Uh, how many of you had a good Christmas? Amen. We, uh, we got a good crowd, even for it, though it's Christmas. Got a lot of people on the road. Figured we had a few visitors anyway. Last Sunday, we actually had 273 people. That was a great day. Kids did a great job with the, the play and stuff. As, as Mike mentioned, we don't pass the hat here. God puts it on your heart to give your tithes and offerings. The wooden church is in the back. Don't forget to get your church bulletin. Make sure that lets you know a lot that's going on here in the church and coming up. Plus, it has a little spot for make some notes on for the sermon notes for the scriptures. Uh, sale barn, stop by the sale barn if on your, after church if you can. Lady's got a lot of cool stuff in there uh, representing JC3. Men's prayer breakfast is every Monday morning at... Uh, 6 a.m., so that'll be in the morning. Nursery's available. Follow the sign there, and you can go down the hallway. First door on the left, you'll see the nursery. Round pen, is, which is men's and women's Bible study at 9 a.m. If you need a Bible before you leave today, we got some, and we got some back there in the back. We'll make sure we get a Bible in your hands. It's a cowboy Bible, learning the ropes. Uh, there's a couple of addresses for my youngest daughter, Bailey, and Miss um, Annie, which would have been Miss Pat, the lady who passed away this summer. Uh, her daughter was having a hard time through the holidays, so we got two addresses out there where you can reach out to people. 
We'll have our revival January the 5th here at the church through the night. That's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then Sunday will just be regular church service as always. But that will start January the 5th, so that's in your bulletin. Be planning for that. Don't forget to keep an eye on our morning devotionals. We, a lot of people, several hundred people watch that every day. We do a devotion on there about 6.40 in the morning. And as most of you know, Miss Patrice uh, went home to be with the Lord yesterday. She was greatly loved in our church. She will be missed. But me and, I went over and visited with Jimmy this morning. We're getting some things lined out for the service, the celebration of life that uh, will take place. And it will truly be a celebration when you think of Miss Patrice. Amen. What a, what a great testimony. Uh, I told Jimmy, I said, this is one of the easiest funerals I've ever done. I don't even have to speak. She doesn't preach her own funeral, amen, through the life that she lived. But we want to honor her and have a celebration like we will let you know. I will let you know on those morning devotionals uh, what day that it will be. Good chance it will be Friday, but they will, they will know a little more. Keep Mr. Jimmy and his entire, all the entire family in your prayers. Matter of fact, let's do so now as the church body. Lord, we just lift up this family to you. We thank you for loaning us, Miss Patrice, Lord. And what a blessing she was to us. She taught us a lot. She exemplified you, was a great example of true love and giving and caring. And Lord, we just thank you for letting us borrow for these years. And we just pray, Lord, that you would give this family and give all of us strength and peace and comfort through this time. We thank you for your love and your word. And I speak peace and strength over this family. And may this celebration of life go honor you, God, and may it draw people to you that may not know you in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. All right, where's my boys? I'm ready. <laughs> See, Mr. Toby over here. Now, y'all know I got, I thought I was going to have to wear these shades, but I don't think I am. They was messing with me about these shades back there. All right. Hey, two brothers here. I'm going to get Dad to tell us tell us your name, Dad. You know you love microphones. Stephen Brady. Mr. Stephen, they, they've been coming to church, and it's kind of a neat testimony. They came to me Wednesday. Toby lined it up and said, hey, got two young men wanting to talk to you. And so they come to me, and, boy, they we visited a minute, and basically they right off the bat said, you know, we've given our lives to Christ, but we want to be water baptized at church. Amen? Isn't it great to see young people? And so we talked about it, and uh, have y'all decided who's going first yet? The little man pointed up to the brother, all right, the big, the older brother. So anyway, it's exciting to see young people. And let me, let me plant a little seed in your heart. How many of you remember when uh, just a few weeks ago I, uh, some, a couple of young kiddos got saved? And, and give their life to Christ, and so they got baptized. I don't know, a month or two ago, maybe. And uh, the Chapmans, you know, Kyle Chapman and his his kiddos got baptized. I said, well, when did it kind of God start dealing with you? And they said, actually, when those young men, their friends, and said the Chapmans, when they were baptized, started working on us. That's why I always tell our people, if, you, if God puts it on your heart to be baptized. Get after it. I'm, I'm ready. We'll fill it up right in five minutes before church if we got to because usually it is the greatest proclamation of your faith being water baptized that you can have. And my point is you're preaching when you do that. It actually reaches lots of people. So these young men give their hearts to Christ, and here we go. And so it's exciting to see what God's doing in our church. So we're ready to get this on. <laughs> Tell us your name, young man. Cain Brady. That's Cain. So, Cain, I know you've given your heart to Jesus Christ, correct? Amen. You can step on up here. I like rolling these sleeves up. Always. There ain't many months go by we don't baptize. So, step on up here, Cain. Just sit down there. Amen. Cain, on your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just hold your nose. I got you. Amen. Woo. Standing ovation. I'm going to take a hug, buddy. <laughs> I take wet hugs. Amen. There he is. 
I want you to tell us your name, tough guy. Luke Brady. Luke Brady. He's tough. <laughs> Amen. Mr. Luke, come on up here, buddy. He hopped in there like a cat squirrel, didn't he? <laughs> All right, Luke. <laughs> he went outside already. <laughs> Little Luke, buddy, on your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you personally accepting him, I now, now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Luke. Woo! Good job, buddy. Amen, amen. That's awesome. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Chunk him in. <laughs> Put him in there. Amen. They was messing with me about my shades earlier, and I told them I was thinking about coming in with a bunch of gold chains and some shades, and then I got to thinking, I said, I'll probably get knocked in the head. I'm, I ain't doing that. <laughs> All right, well, Mike, you better take it over. I can't sing. How many of you want the preacher to try to sing more? <laughs> I think it's all you, buddy. <laughs> he said, get her done. Oh, okay. Come on up, kiddos. Good-looking crowd of kids. And a mean one. All right, if you'll remove cover and join us. Ready, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, are they going upstairs today? Anybody know? I reckon not. Roy, you going to take them upstairs and teach them something? <laughs> if we do, it'll be at the end of the singing anyway. He said, I ain't got my whip. <laughs> that not work. I could see them going up there with you and Tracy. They'd learn something, wouldn't they? <laughs> can take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can take a soul that's sensitive. Upon the water or calm the raging sea, but I know a man who can. I can't cause blind eyes to open or make the lame to walk again, but I know a man. Yeah. 
If you feel no one can help you And your life is out of hand Well, I know a man who can Well, I know a man who can I know all of you know the words to this song, so sing along with us. Well, I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I I dreamed of a city called glory, so bright and so clear. When I entered the gates, I cried, holy, the angels all.
pastors to come up at this time. Such as they are. We just got a couple of here. There's Miss Allison. I was looking for a replacement. Y'all better give her a round of applause. <laughs> We're going to open this last song up as an altar call. If you need prayer, just come on up and get with one of these folks. Would you stand and worship with us? Lily of the valley, let your sweet aroma fill my life. Rose of Sharon, show me. How to grow in beauty in God's sight. Fairest of ten thousand, make me a reflection of your life. Day star shine down on me. Let your shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let you God, I come to you right now with open arms, Father. God, I summon your spirit in this place this morning. Father, I just pray right now that you would open our hearts, God, that we would receive the message that you've got in store for us today. And God, whoever this song is for this morning, Father, I just pray that you would use it to penetrate their heart. God, to soften it up. Father, to get that ground ready to plant a seed in. God, I just pray that you would be with Pastor Chet this morning as he plants that seed. Father, just hide him behind the cross that he would have the freedom, God, to speak your word as you've got it laid out for him. 
God, I pray that if there's one here this morning that don't know you, Father, that that seed would hit on fertile ground. God, that you would just nourish it, that you would water it. Father, let it grow. And God, most of all, just, Father, just stir them so much that they won't even have peace enough to rest, God, until they accept your Son as Lord and Savior of their lives. God, I just lift the Wagstaff family up to you this morning. God, must pay them. God, they've got a hole in their hearts, Father, we know. And God, we also know that you're the only one that can fill that hole. God, to all the friends, the loved ones, Father, I just pray that you would give them peace this morning. God, because we know Miss Patrice is not hurting anymore. She's safely in the arms of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you for that. Got to just lift up our world to you, our nation. Father, our folks that are still over in Afghanistan this morning. God, we just ask that somehow, some way, God, that you would just get them back home safely. And God, I pray that, you, God, for our leaders this morning, Father, that you would open their eyes and that they would turn to you for leadership and guidance, God, to lead our country the way it should be. Now, God, I ask that you would go on through this service with us this morning. Father, that you would use us for your honor and your glory. Forgive me of my sin, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Lord, I see a world is dying, wounded by the master of deceit. Groping in the darkness, haunted by the years of past defeat. But when I see you standing near me, Lord, Shining with compassion in your eyes I pray Jesus shine down on me Let your love shine through me in the night Lead me Lord I'll follow Anywhere you want me You make welcome, Pastor Chet. Amen. Amen. Everybody blessed today? Hey, we're, you know, if we're here, that means that God is not done with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful that He is good. We got all of our announcements done in baptism. I tell you what, if that don't get you on fire, your wood's wet. Amen. <laughs> good to see young people too, like that. You know, watching the Chapman boys get baptized and plants a seed, and next thing you know, we don't know, it just continues to go on. So even if you, let me throw this out at you. Uh, if you've been baptized before and 
yet, you know, many years ago or whatever it may be, and God's kind of poking at your heart, there's nothing wrong with being rebaptized. I don't have any problem with that because it's really showing everybody whose side we're on. I was baptized as a little boy, but now I didn't know anything and went off and, man, I, I, was, I was a knucklehead. Anybody ever been a knucklehead? We got a lot of liars in here right after Christmas. But when I realized and came to a realization of the truth that Jesus died for me, man, uh, but I don't have any problem. If you want to be baptized, God puts it on your heart to be water baptized. I want you to come see me at any time because it does preach a great message. I still think about the day that Mr. Jimmy Wagstaff rededicated his life and basically stood right there and told me, we ain't leaving until you feel that baptistry. Amen. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, and you know, God God knew what he was doing and even in the midst of that, Jimmy. If you recommit in your life and he knew what was ahead. You know, we don't know what's around the curve, do we? But aren't you glad God knows what's around the curve? And he says he'll walk with you and be with you and lead you and guide you and he'll never forsake you. So whatever you and I go through, he's always there to walk us through it. Amen? All right, let's go ahead and if you have your Bible, we'll go to 2 Timothy and chapter 2, I've been preaching to us on Wednesday nights. We're just going to go down a little further and take a different turn. But I've been in 2 Timothy for a little while. And uh, I'm going to challenge you today. Everybody say this with me. Uh, on three, I want you to say, I love my pastor. One, two, three. When I do that, you know I'm setting you up, right? But I got proof, video proof, that you said you love me, right? And sometimes the pastor is kind of like, uh, you know, it's okay to... For me to hit you with a hot shot in the loading chute, amen? How many of you ever seen an old stubborn cow that didn't want to load? And, you know, and, and, and sometimes the hot shot is the only way to get them moving. Now, I mentioned to you earlier when I got that chemical that was in my thylate in my eye, I ran from the dog kennel to the house in less than five seconds. Had I been seen and on, caught on video, I would be getting calls from different football teams, you know? And I just have to tell them the only way I can run that fast is you had to put a little methylate in my right eye, but I ain't going for that, so I, I'm not signing up for the team. <laughs> but how many of you know you can do things you didn't know you could do? Remember last Sunday, my cousin took that Garrett snuff. I preached on that. I'm going to go a little bit more in detail. There was a three-board or four-wooden fence, and he wouldn't leave me alone about that Garrett snuff. And he turned that Garrett can up, as you all all know, and I told him, don't inhale. Don't breathe in. He took him a breath and sucked that Garrett snuff old red, red label all down in his windpipe. And that guy, I think he might have one-handed touched the top of a post. He cleared that fence and ran to the water hose. And boy, and, and uh, I tell you what, he stayed at the water hose a while. But we, sometimes a little motivation's good for us. A hot shot with an old cow that don't want to go forward or whatever. Uh, sometimes that's good for us. So I got my hot shot today. Y'all ready? You said you love me. And hey, we got a big year coming up, an exciting year. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a guy that loves to cast vision and keep us all focused on what we're here for. You know, when we, it kind of rings a bell with us when we go through a hard time or we lose a friend or a loved one. And we realize this life is just very temporary. And, we, you know, we've lost a great member of our church. But at the same time, like Mike said, she, she is in the presence of the Lord now and wouldn't come back. The Bible says in Revelation 21 that heaven is a place where there's no more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain. Can I get a good amen? Because all those things have passed away. And so it, it's an awesome thing to think about it. But when you do lose someone dear to you that you love, it causes you to take a little inventory of your life, amen, and ask yourself, am I really making my life count for the kingdom of God, which will ultimately be all that matters? Thank God that he cares about our needs on this earth. He says that he takes care of the birds. He'll take care of you and I. But really and truly, it helps us to get re-centered. Re and I'm, I'm always been a guy that preaches vision, and I'm excited about the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all know my testimony as good as I do, but I'm, I'm just as excited today as I've ever been, if not more, even though I've been walking with the Lord many years now, since 1993. But I'm going to challenge you today a little bit. Let's open with a word of prayer. Lord, speak to our hearts. May we leave here different than we came. 
And may we be spurred on and may we be hot-shotted a little if need be to do what you called us to do and be the men and women that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Y'all do realize we just talked to the Lord and told him to spur us on. He even hot shot us a little bit, so y'all, y'all down with what I just prayed for, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I want to challenge you today, and I'm going to ask you a question. What kind of soldier are you? And that goes for me, too. Look at your neighbor and say that. What kind of soldier are you? And, you know, if you are a Christian, the Bible refers to you and I as a soldier for Jesus Christ. And a lot of you, raise your hand in here if you've been in the military before. Anybody got military background? Amen. Several of you. And if you're a soldier and you're in the military, there's things that are expected of you. Is that correct, Mr. Calvin? <laughs> and there's things that are expected of you. Amen. How many of you remember boot camp? Raise your hand real high if you remember boot camp. How many of you are like, Lord Jesus, I wish I might could forget some of boot camp? Especially if you went several, you know, some time back. But there's a reason that you go through boot camp. They're training you to be a what? A soldier. That's your job. If you, when you join the military, they're training you to be a soldier for Christ. And so my question is, what kind of soldier am I? What kind of soldier are you? I'm kind of hard-headed. And, you know, have, raise your hand if you're hard-headed. 100%. And I, I've always been a little hard-headed and, and determined and used to. I'd get bucked off a bull. It was easy to buck me off. It was just easy to make me open my hand and quit. They'd be dragging me sometimes, and I just wouldn't let go. And so that hard-headedness can be an asset. It can be a disadvantage. But in my walk with Jesus, I've carried on that hard-headedness in a good way because there's always going to be obstacles come against you. you. You hadn't really even faced any struggles until you really sell out to Jesus. There'll be all kinds of distractions come your way. Amen? <laughs> all kinds of distractions. And so the more you sell out to Christ, the more you have to be able to, to handle those fiery darts the Bible calls that Satan sends our way. Why is there such a battle for you? There's a battle for you because God has a call on you and has uniquely made each one of us in this room. And that hard-headedness that maybe we once used to our disadvantage, we can use to our advantage. Kip called me the other night. I texted him and said, hey, guys, got a little problem. Did y'all pray for me? And so Kip called me and said, hey, man, I know what the answer's going to be, but if you need me to cover for you Sunday... I'll do it. I said, I don't care if i got to put a patch over my eye. And I did have to wear a patch a couple of days. But by the grace of God, I, I feel good. I'm able to do this without any shades. Amen. I got them. I was messing with Allison. I said, I think I'm going to put some shades on and a big old gold necklace messing around. I said, nah, I better not do that at the cowboy church. I might get in trouble. might not go out of there. <laughs> but I hard head as Kip calls me and said, hey, man, if you need me to, I'll fill in Sunday. I said, man... If i got to do it with a patch on, I ain't going to miss no service. Just If I want to take off one Sunday, I will, but I ain't going to let something like this distract me. So sometimes hard hit, and this is good, when it's committed to our Lord Jesus Christ. And any good soldier has to be committed. A good soldier, I wrote a couple things down last night that I think God kind of brought to my attention. A good soldier, number one, is should be ready. You know, it's hard to be a good soldier if you're not ready. <laughs> Even I look into at it as like a football game. If you're in a football game and know that your number can be called, you need your, you need your helmet close by. Preferably have it, go ahead and buckle your chin strap and tighten up your cleats and you're ready to go. So a good soldier must be ready at all times. Everybody say amen. Because God kind of freaks us out sometimes, don't he? He puts us in positions to maybe plant a seed and do something that's uncomfortable to us. And we want to hide behind I'm not ready. But God, a lot of times, says you are ready when you don't even realize you are. So a good soldier is ready. A good soldier is trained. Everybody say trained. A good soldier is equipped. Everybody say equipped. And I think about us being ready. As soldiers for Christ, we got to be ready. The Bible says that we're to be instant or ready in season and out, no matter what goes down. We should be ready to give a witness for our Lord. Now, that doesn't mean you have to get up and preach a sermon. 
I read a deal one time. It says, preach the gospel always, and if necessary, use words. So you can, you, you can do whatever you do for a living. We got people in here that work in offices. We got people in here that day work for a living, and anything in between. And you got people dumb like me that shoe horses so. Of course, now I pastor a church. That's my first call in life. I'm so thankful for uh, getting to come to this church. That's my first job. But I also shoe some horses on the side and do things like that. All, all that's good, but my purpose is to live for Him. Yeah, getting up in front of you preaching, that helps us. It's basically a, a spiritual pep rally. But most of the time, when I get to reach out and really minister to someone, it may be in an old barn somewhere, shoeing a horse, and somebody says, Hey, would you pray for me? And it all works together. So God uses us in many different ways. So a, a, number one, a soldier has to be ready. They've got to be trained. And not only trained, but they've got to be equipped. And you know what? God has equipped us with His Word. Amen? It has equipped us with His Word. And so the question is, are we willing to get in there and find out what's up? This is the, the, the manual to our lives. And the more you get in there, the, the more that God will use you, and you will be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. 1 through verse 13, it says, Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. So Paul is speaking to a young man, a young pastor, and he says, I want you to be strong. Everybody say, be strong. He said, Timothy, dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trust, trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Does that make sense to you? We, we, we plant seeds in our life. We share the gospel in our lives in so many ways. Now verse 3, he says, Endure suffering along with me. How many of you know we're like, Hey man, can we go to a different chapter? It says, endure suffering along with me. Now, mind you, Paul wrote this from a prison cell. And he was placed in prison for preaching the gospel. Thank God we don't live in those times today. But he said, endure suffering along with me as a what? Good soldier. Soldier of who? Jesus Christ. So, if you are a Christian, you are a soldier for Jesus Christ. And so my challenge is, what kind of soldier are we? And sometimes we don't like the answer. And the crowd roared with an enthusiastic amen. <laughs> Maybe it was the online people roaring with an amen, right? But you know, we're thinking, we're asking ourselves, what kind of soldier am I? Am I ready? Am I trained? Am I equipped? Who better else is an example than Miss Patrice? She was always ready. Always ready to go. Even until just a few days before she went to the Lord, we would call her and ask her a question about something big, a rodeo, this or that. And man, she would light up. You could hear her. She'd be kind of weak, but she'd get some energy. Man, and she was equipped. She was ready. She was always available for certain. She was a good soldier for Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to be. We'll keep reading on. He says... Endure sufferings as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And here we go. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life. See, if I'm a soldier for Christ, i got to focus on what my job is. And as a Christian, our job is to share the love of Christ in our own way. It may be out. People can see Christ in us. It may be. Roy out working a set of cows, and it may be somebody else in an office, and it may be me out driving a nail in a horse's foot, and yet talking and, and somehow or another being available for people. It's crazy, man. Technology nowadays, at a gas station, somebody, I say it all the time, but it's different people. said, dang, man, how you doing, Pastor Chad? <laughs> I ain't never got to meet you, but I've been watching those devotions. A grown man tear up at a gas station and say, gosh, man, God's working on me, man. We get to be a part of God's work. Take your finger and stick it in your chest and say, I am blessed. 
we are blessed to get to call ourselves a Christian and follow him, but we got to make sure we're a good soldier, amen? He said soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the who? Officer who did what? Enlisted them. Did you know <laughs> the officer that enlisted us is the Lord himself? When we give our hearts to Christ, we're automatically put into the family of God. We didn't deserve it, but he'd done it anyway. Aren't you glad for God's grace? Amen. See, we struggle with that. But when God hired you on, he put a brand on you. I remember years ago when I used to raise bucking bulls, we had different brands, electric brands, and we had a big old nice hydraulic squeeze chute. Boy, how many of you ever used a manual squeeze chute? How many of you got used to a hydraulic squeeze chute and you're like, thank God for hydraulics? But man, we could sit there and catch a bull or a heifer or whatever we was doing. Let, let that little pig down, boy, we brand that cow. And, and that, if you branded that heifer, we used to buck all of our heifers, just like the bulls. And if the heifers pitched and really bucked, enhanced your chances of genetically breeding a good bucking bull. And so once we branded it, that says, hey, that, that, that's, that, that cow has a brand on it. And when you come to Christ, I'm not recalling you a cow, okay? I'm just saying when you come to Christ, you are branded by God. And you didn't deserve that brand. It was given to you. And once you're branded, you're now the team. And we got an officer that enlisted us. It was God himself. So he said, soldiers don't get tied up with the affairs of this world or civilian life, for they cannot please the officers who enlisted them. And one day, we will all, the Bible says, stand before our, our Lord. And we will give an account of our life. And those whiny, measly excuses we sometimes give won't carry any weight. All the Lord is going to care about with you and I is did we do what he called us to do? Some of you, it's to be a mom. You may be in a phase in your life you got kids. That is a calling, to be a dad. Just, just bloom where you're planted. Wherever God's got you, let your light shine for him. It's, it's not as complicated as we make it. But thank God that we are branded. Now, he goes on in verse 5 and says, Athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow the rules. And hardworking farmers should not be the first to, uh, should be the first to, Enjoy the fruit of their labor. Think about what I'm saying. The Lord will help you understand all these things. Remember always that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal. But the word of God cannot be what? They put Paul in prison and the brother starts preaching in there. Amen? <laughs> Sharing the gospel. He says, God's word cannot be changed. Verse 10, I am willing to endure anything if I can bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. Paul says, I'm willing to endure anything. This is a trustworthy saying, verse 11, if we die with him, we shall also what? Live with him. Praise God. If we endure hardships, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. Now listen to verse 13. If we are unfaithful, raise your hand if you've ever been unfaithful to the Lord. You, maybe you didn't mean it, but we all have. This, this verse jumps off. It says, verse 13, if you are unfaithful, he remains what? Aren't you thankful for his grace? For he cannot deny who he is. And he purposely branded you when you surrendered your heart to him. You can jump the fence and run like a spotted ape, but you're still his. How many of us have jumped the fence and went out to so-called greener pastures? Next thing you know, we're walking the fence trying to get back in. You ever seen an old cow get out and then they're trying to figure out how to get back in? Takes them a little while. <laughs> That's the way we are sometimes. But I am so thankful that when he branded you, he branded you. And when he branded you, he called you a soldier for him. He loves you. you got a fingerprint like nobody else. He's got a purpose for our lives. And I challenge you and myself today, what kind of soldier are we? Do we let our light shine for him? 
Do we just be us? Just be you. But you know what? When, when you're you, and people do see a difference in your life. Now, we know that our walk with Christ is a progressive journey. Just when you think you're mega Christian, something crazy can happen, and you wonder, am I a Christian? 30 minutes later. And we question ourselves, and we need to grow in our walk, but things can come up and get in our way. Has that ever happened to anybody? Verse 13 says, If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Can I get a good amen? I want to challenge you today. Miss Cheryl, would you pull up Acts chapter 4, verse 12 and 13? That was fast. For there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven in which we must be saved. Now verse 13 says, And the members of the council, now this is Peter, James, they were preaching the gospel after Jesus ascended to heaven. It's the book of Acts. And a beggar was healed, and they had this big religious meeting to decide what to do about it. The, the religious leaders. We don't need religion, we need relationship with Christ. Because Christ will come down and save you in a jail cell. Amen. He'll come down and save you when you're on top of the world. And break you down and make you humble you and make you bow that knee to Jesus. He'll come and, and save you at your lowest point. We all have different testimonies. Amen. But all, we can all say the same thing. Thank God for his grace. But what kind of soldier are we? I mean, are we hopping around when the bell rings and it's time to go to work? trying to polish our shoe and hopping on one foot, trying to get our clothes on, and we're ready. Only We can only answer that for each other. But he goes on and says, the members of the council were amazed that they saw the boldness. Everybody say boldness. God can give us boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were what? Ordinary. Everybody raise your hand if that, if that looks like you. <laughs> They were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures, but they also recognized what? Them as, as men who had what? Been with Jesus. When you spend time with him, it shows. That, that verse in the King James Version says they realized they were ignorant and untrained men. I thought, me in the Bible. But you know what? Don't. Don't underestimate. God can, God can close a lot of gap in your life and use you in so many ways. I'm going to challenge us all for this new year. It's time to close. I'm going to be preaching hard first of the year. We're starting today. Vision. Our church has got a vision to reach as many people as we can with the gospel. We, ha we have an unusual field or a lake to fish in. The whole county. They come out to things we do. You ever notice that? When I go to the radio station, they say over and over again, we don't have, never seen a church quite like JC3. Y'all are always doing something. And we plow the field crossways. That's right. We want to catch some fish. Amen? And we draw, do things to draw people in. So vision, our, what, what are we here for? We're a soldier of Christ. It's to win people to the Lord. The only thing you can take to heaven with you is someone else. Amen. I hope Peanut gets to go with me. I'm going to tell this on Sunday, Miss Christy. Was that your granddaughter? How old is she? What was y'all talking about in a, in a nutshell? Talking about Miss Allison. She's talking to her granddaughter. She's mentioning Allison. So her granddaughter thinks, well, Allison is just a friend here at church. So then after service and everything, she said, that, that is Miss Allison. She said, oh, okay. And she said, that's Pastor Chet's wife. She said, what? I didn't know he had a wife. I thought he just had peanut. <laughs> so, anyway, man, kids can be funny. Amen. <laughs> I like peanut, but like Allison said Wednesday, peanut can't cook too good. <laughs> Amen. We need vision, though. We need purpose in our life. 
We got a purpose of living for Jesus, and our goal is to reach people and to fill up heaven. Can I get a good amen? Tell as many people as we can about our Lord. If everybody in here, you know, we had 273 people last Sunday. That's crazy. The Sunday before Christmas. In the midst of even dealing with COVID for two years. But God, God still wants the word out. So if everybody just in here invited one person to church, you'd be surprised what had happened. And you know what the worst thing they can say is? No, you've heard that before, hadn't you? Did you live through it? It's okay. How many of you have been salesmen and heard no before? Did you stop? Why not? Because you was hungry. Because you had to pay them bills. And I'm going to tell you what, nothing is more important than people have a relationship with Christ. When we take that serious, we don't get hung up. It says a good soldier doesn't get hung up in the affairs of this world. Amen? Our focus is on our Lord and representing Him in a way that would be an honorable way. So I challenge you, we got work to do this year. Y'all already do it like a phenomenal job. This church, the volunteers are known as the killer bees. If we need something done, you get out of the way, you'll always get, in, get hurt if you tell them you need something done. So let's pray us out of here. Lord, speak to our hearts today. May we be that good soldier of Jesus Christ. Have your way in our lives. Use us, mold us, and make us into who we, you want us to be. You branded us, Lord, and we allow you to pop us a little bit with the hot shot whatever you got to do to get us through that shoot get us doctored and vaccinated and all those things that we need to bear fruit for you we just surrender our lives to you today lord you've never accepted christ or you maybe you have and you need to rededicate your life i want you to pray this prayer with me whether you're online or here oh god i realize i'm a sinner in need of a savior jesus i know you died on the cross for my sin and i commit my life to you and i ask you to have your way in my life and take the reins of my life and lead and guide and direct me and use me. Let's all say that together. And use me, Lord. One more time. Use me, Lord. We surrender to you. Have your way. And Lord, we love you. And we're so glad you branded us. You gave us hope. You gave us strength. And we look forward to the coming days ahead for our church and for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Well. We're good soldiers, amen? And that old good soldier, he's ready for work. Thank y'all. I'm going to go back here and shake some hands. Good service. Even right the day after Christmas, we got a good crowd here. Thank y'all for coming. I'm going to go shake some hands at the back right quick.